Hi, my name is Kelly, and this is my 2017 Dodge Grand Caravan. Um, actually moving into it full time this afternoon. Why'd you get into the van? Well, I, it was kind of a long story, but I had issues uh, with my ex and money. And what I've learned is basically don't ever have joint bank accounts or credit cards for anything. Um, so uh, yeah, basically that was it. Um, trying to just recoup uh, some of the financial difficulty that I've been through in the past year or so. And, um, you know, I mean, I have a full-time job and everything. Uh, so this will save rent and put all that money that I now don't have back in my pocket. So it's a really small van, but it has a lot of crap in it. So, uh, I have a diesel heater, um, which is one of the first things cause I'm going to obviously in Canada in the winter and Ontario need heat. Uh, so I have a diesel heater. I will also have two cats that will be, uh, joining me. Uh, they're not here today, uh, but this is basically their litter pan. I don't know if you can see there is an entrance from inside the van into the litter box here. And then in this counter, <laughs> we built this cubbies for the cats so they can go. It's like, yeah. Spoil rot. Yeah. <laughs> well, I work for a van, right? Did you build a van for you or the cats? Mostly the cats, I think, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the, what I was thinking was in the summertime, I'll probably put screens on these so I can leave the hatch open, you know, and they can hang out in there and uh, be cool. And this is just here, just so the cats don't get down on the sides. And when you build a van and everything, you have to use every little nook and cranny, but when you also travel with pets, especially cats who get into everything, you have to block off all your little extra spaces, right? Um, so this is water storage, and I've got another one over on the side, uh, passenger side as well. The main floor. <laughs> uh, so unlike a lot of people who live in minivans, I stripped everything out of mine. Um, all the cup holders, the walls, floor. Um, I had the floor professionally built because it was so uneven. It was like ridiculous. Um, and it does have two of the uh, stow and go in here. So that's a lot of extra storage. Um, the bed slides out uh, and has cubbies underneath it and stuff. I don't, you don't need, necessarily need to see that, but um, I have a refrigerator, a good uh, like real fridge one, not like just a cooler anyway. So that kind of lives there. And then because you have to use every single space, I've got a drawer up here. Uh, behind this, I know it's probably hard to see, but behind this is where I have uh, storage for my stove, pans, things like that. Um, you know, these cabinets, store a lot of, don't film that one. <laughs> but these cabinets hold a lot of stuff. Um, yeah, in there. And then like a spice shelf and another cabinet and baskets and just, you know, stuff to put stuff, I guess. So uh, I'm right now, because I have to be in this full time today, I'm just kind of in the process of finding places for everything. So now then uh, I'll know when I finish building this at uh, the top here that uh, I may add extra shelves or something like that, depending on what I need. And then the ceiling will be the last thing that I do. And it's all, by the way, uh, it's insulated, the whole van. Um, you could probably see it all hanging out there in the back, but uh, because the van's hollow once you strip everything out, so it's all Havelock wool. Um, took about a half a bag to do the whole van, so I still have plenty left over to, I don't know, roll around in in the winter. <laughs> so.
Uh, for the build, I had originally was going to have a lot of it professionally built out, but then the person that was going to work with me couldn't do all of it. So um, I had the floor professionally done and then pretty much everything else um, I built uh, with some help from my boyfriend mostly. Um, but until I started this project, I never used a power tool in my life, like not even a power screwdriver, nothing. And now I can use like jigsaws and table saws and all kinds of things and um, kind of really get into it after a while because it turned out it was kind of fun, like doing the build, like cutting things, fitting everything together in this van was kind of a challenge because nothing is even, it's different than a cargo van. Um, but um, yeah, I mean like the bed, built this uh, all myself and built uh, this pull out drawers here. And like I said, the bed actually extends and slides out to this length here. Um, yeah, I mean, we built all this cabinets, drawers, everything. Did all the staining, painting, all that stuff. Um, sanding, yeah, I think we own like three sanders now. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So it's been a, it's, it's been something, I, you know, I show people that and they're like, oh my God, I can't believe you'd like live in a minivan. Like when I first told my boss, like he thought I was crazy. And I think he seriously thought I was just going to, not, not against people who do that, but just throw like a sleeping bag in the van and like that was going to be it. And I was like, no, like it's going to have like a kitchen and this and that. And I don't think he could picture it. And now, now he sees it and he's like, oh, like he had, you know, no idea that you could do this in a small van, especially. So, so when I first started researching living in the van full time, um, the biggest things that I knew I needed was going to be um, insulation heat and ventilation so actually the first thing that i got was the um the max air fan um i did have that professionally installed because uh it's the same guy who did the floor actually put the fan in for me because uh, there was no way in hell i was drilling through the roof on my own um but this thing has been like a, a it's it's open all the time i leave it's 24 7 this thing is open it's fantastic um and especially you know when i have the cats in here it's gonna really help uh, circulate, keep them happy. It runs off the Jackery. Uh, I have a Jackery 500. I have a lot of things I need to run off that Jackery 500. So I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to allocate everything yet. Um, but uh, this summer, this and and this fan, it was amazing. Like just uh, having the doors open and and then the breeze that this would make and on the even on the super hot days, it was comfortable in here. Um, this fan is amazing and I can't wait to mount it someplace, but <laughs> uh, I love this fan. Um, and the diesel heater, well, you know, I've, I've only run it a couple times, uh, more like for testing purposes, um, but because my van is so small, it gets really toasty in here pretty quick, so, um, which is nice. Um, I've given myself a, a year, hopefully, to kind of recoup everything, but uh, as far as all my financial losses and stuff which is the main reason why I'm, I'm in the van um, but you know it may turn out to be longer uh, it might be nice to you know do some uh, traveling if I can in between working full-time and stuff um, but you know if, if you're this is a doable option for people um, you know if even you don't necessarily even have to go to like this extreme of like pulling everything out and building all kinds of stuff but uh just know that you know living in your vehicle is an option lots of people do it um it doesn't say anything bad about you or or your situation you know what you're you're pulling yourself up and doing your thing and
Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit in detail about how I ended up in the van. Um, so uh, I had uh, an ex-boyfriend of 12 years um, and about a year or so ago uh, discovered that he had been having an affair and put uh, about $6,000 worth of debt on my credit card, um, which has still not been paid because I'm not paying for his affair. <laughs> um, but um, so obviously, you know, we broke up, I moved out, money was tight. Uh, a couple of months after uh, I moved out, we broke up. Uh, there was issues with taxes because we had done some joint tax stuff. Um, long story short, the CRA basically took my entire life savings um, and left me with nothing. Um, so I got to the point where, well, now I need to kind of recoup all those losses. And, you know, I'm, I work a full-time job, but I work for a veterinarian. We don't get paid great. Um, you know, I'm putting in 50, 60 hours a week and still barely making ends meet. Um, so, you know, I kind of was looking at my options. Okay, do I get a cheaper place? Do I rent a room? Do I get a roommate? And uh, I'm 48 and I didn't, I didn't want a roommate. I'm too old for that crap. So, you know, I looked into living in the van, uh, found out that that was a, a viable option. Um, you know, I'd rather be in the van, have my own space, do my own thing than, you know, roommates and all that stuff. Um, and then I do have to say, I'll just throw this out there, but um, when COVID hit, <clears throat> you know, I was out of work for a while as well. So that also was more, you know, financial stuff. All of my money um, since I decided to do this, you know, everything, materials, time, uh, I'm originally from the States and um, moved here for my ex. Um, I'm a permanent resident here now, but my family is all in the States. Um, I have two kids that are, they're older, um, but they're in the States. I haven't seen them now. I don't even know, it's been almost a year, I think, since I've seen them, since I can't get over the border um, to see them or my dad or anybody. What I found, once I started doing this van build and meeting other people who like live in vans and kind of have the same, you know, mindset or have been in these similar situations that meeting all of these people and kind of having that support um, has really helped with not being able to go over the border and see my family. And, you know, it's just kind of a, it's kind of nice because um, the, the community is just really, really good. Um, anyway, that's my, that's my story. It's perfect.